Jordan again. So, so kata is the next thing we're learning, which basically means from. Something that I just want to let you know, kata only occurs after nouns. So this is like an interesting tidbit because there is a different kind of kata that occurs after clauses. And a lot of times people get confused between the two, but it's really obvious which is which simply because one of them goes after clauses and one of them goes after nouns. But for now, you don't need to know that until we learn that the clause kata, which I'm sure will pop up at some point. But this goes after nouns. Um, can you read this one noun for me first? Pocket. Yeah, pocketo. That just means pocket. Can you read the sentence for me then? Majutsu shi no pocketo kara mado sekio nusunda. So the subject of the sentence has been dropped again. You can just say con for now. Pretend con did this. What do you think this is, would say in English? Let's say um from the from the pocket of the magician the magical stone was stolen perfect yes exactly so how would you think you would say fog flows from the river we got kawa kiri and nagareru fogs flow from the river ah so kawa kara Kiri Nagareta or hey. Nagareru. Yeah, Nagareru is flows, Nagareta was did flow. So, did flow. Hi. Nagareru. You accidentally forgot the particle ga because that's the object of the sentence, the or whatever. Um, just a random tidbit, I'm just letting you know. Kawa can go here, it can also go over here because Japanese allows a lot of movement. So you can, your sentence is 100% correct. And so is this one. Kiri ga kawa kara nagareru. Both of those, exact same meaning, no difference. I just like pointing those out as we uh, get to them, get uh, used to them. So our next word is roji. This basically means um like road, but tends to be like a uh, specifically alleyway. Kind of like an alleyway road. Alleyway. Roji. So the first part we're learning is the ji part of doji. Um, this is a super, super common kanji that is either going to be pronounced as ji or chi. It tends to be depending on where it is in the sentence. For example, a word you might know is chizu. Chizu, which means map. Chizu. Uh, specifically, this means um, earth or ground. So this right here is G in this context. Roji. So komu is a verb that basically I like to describe as going into something. It has this kanji right here, which shows up in um hairu, which means to enter. But komu is more mm -hmm. like the act of like go it like being crammed into something. It's specifically it's the cramming. Um, verb versus just entering. Um, so normally, if you see komu, it's not this, just yeah. Is this an active or passive form of the verb? In other words, like the one we talked about earlier. Um, um to actively flow or to. So this one right here, passively. the person doing this would get attached by wa, like watashi wa nanika o komu. Uh, so it would be the active, active to cram something. There's some um, power going on here to make a decision for. Yeah, so that's the active one. Um, hi. So the next thing I'm gonna tell you is about compound verbs. I'm gonna tell you how to make these, but this is just a really interesting thing about Japanese is like, for example, in English, we have compound nouns that like birdhouse, doghouse, and treehouse. All of these are referring to a kind of house and the noun behind it describes the kind of house, though it can be a little bit different. For example, a birdhouse is a thing that looks like a house that feed, you feed birds in. A doghouse is actually a house dogs live in. And a treehouse is a house made of trees. So in Japanese, about 90% of their compound verbs are super obvious in a treehouse kind of way. House made of trees. That tends to be out it. And about 10% is more metaphorical in the bird and doghouse kind of way. 
but um right. but so you'll see a lot of things like this like yomu means to read and ageru means up like it can also mean to raise your voice so yomi ageru means to read out loud you're reading up reading with your voice raised or yomu to read and hajimeru to start yomi hajimeru is to start reading so sometimes some verbs will not show up in the dictionary that are compound verbs you can kind of guess by context by separating out the two verbs that way um, but most of them are in the dictionary so you learn nagareru, which is to flow passively, and komu, which is to be crammed. So what happens, do you think, if we combine these two verbs together? What do you think we get? Nagare komu, meaning to flow into something. Exactly. That's 100% what it means. So yeah, yeah so woo. So rather than just learning this as the word to flow into something, it's more useful, I think, to learn the words that build it up in this case. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how this is pronounced? It means alleyway. It means rochi. Hai. Perfect. So let's go read this sentence. This is an example of a relative clause. Tell me what it means. Kawa kara kiri ga nagare komu rochi. Hai. Meaning um, from the river the mists flow into the alley. Perfect. That's exactly what it means. <laughs> Hi. And now we're learning the first part. Do you know how this is pronounced? Um, this is alleyway. Alleyway. Ro. ro. Yep. This is a ro. ro. So ro. I wrote ro. ro from roji. Hi. Uh, what does this kanji mean? Um, I'm not sure what it means on its own, but we have kuchi, which can mean entrance. And we have this right here with ashi, which is feet. And this is like human. So human feet entrance. But I don't mm. know what it means on its own. Uh, okay. Can you read this word for me? Onyami? Good guess. Onyami? So this is not um on like ongaku, though it does have the music sound effect here. This is the word we saw earlier with kurai and makura, which means dim or dark. Kurayami. Yes, kurayami. Yami means darkness. So we got dark darkness, dim darkness. So you use kurayami when something's super dark. <laughs> so super dark darkness. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of funny that both of these have sound in it. So it's the day of with sound and the gate with sound are both darkness and dim. You maybe you might think about it um, if if it's totally silent and you kind of hear that bee noise, which I think most people hear. <laughs> <laughs> the tetanus goes. <laughs> uh, well, um, I don't know if you know this, but it, the reason that it had the sound character in the kanji is because in the Chinese version of it. It, it the the sound for shadow and the sound for the 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 phonetic for sound oh. and the phonetic for shadow is the same that's interesting mm -hmm. i know no chinese so the, this so this no, i had no relationship <laughs> so the component basically right. the, the this kanji is composed of a of a um one component signified the meaning and then the other component signified the sound that it makes. Had... Makes sense. Yeah, that person had a, those people had a lot of fun deciding, hmm, how are we going to go select and choose kanji for our Japanese words? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you read the sentence for me? Oops. There you go. Uh, kurayami. Ah, this... Rochi wa makurayami. Right, perfect. Good job not being cut off by that bad furigana stuck on there. <laughs> what do you think this means? It means um, the alleyway is truly dark. Yeah, truly, truly, tru truly super duper 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 dark. So, to iu. Um, so, iu is to say, literally and to is used for quotations for things like if i said kanto imashita means i said the word kan however 
toyu is used commonly in Japanese. It's used to define things. So to define A as B. So kan toyu dorobo means the kan that is a thief. So you will also use this if you want to say, like you want to name something. So the thief that is called kan would probably how you translate this specific sentence into English. Just because we wouldn't really say kan is defined as a thief. That, that's like a lot of words to say. Um, yeah, that's how you define things. Um, can you read okay. this sentence for me and tell me what it means? Irigaf. Nagare komu rochi wa makurayami. What does that mean? Um, it means the mist flow into the alleyway. Um, and then makurayami, it's truly dark. Yes. So um, I would kind of say the alleyway that the mist flew into was completely dark would just be how I would translate that into English. Just because the thing that's completely dark is the roji versus the kiri. Um, hi. How do you think you would say a magician known as Khan or defining Khan as a magician? We got majutsushi and Khan. I think we do that. Khan to you majutsushi. Perfect. Yes. So another thing this defining can do can be used if you want to say all. Of something. Can you read this phrase for me? Dorobo to you, dorobo. So if you define an alleyway as an alleyway, this literally means all alleyways. Dorobo to you, oh, sorry, <laughs> a thief. If you define a thief as a thief, you're literally saying all thieves in the sentence. <laughs> dorobo a to you, that is a thief. A thief. So this is just a way to say thieves in general. Dorobo to you, dorobo. In plural. Yeah, it's a way to pluralize it. And it, it's a little bit dramatic is what I'd say with that. Um, so our next verb is kusumu. And it basically means to be getting dark. And the past form kusunda means it is dark. To Hi. be dark. Um, so now it's been a little bit. Uh, you've seen some examples of relative clause. So now it's going to be your turn to try and make it a relative clause. This right here is a random relative clause I made based off a previous sentence, which is Majutsushi no pocketo kara nusunda madosaki, which is the magical stone that was stolen from the pocket of the magician. But I want you to say the fog that is dark, so that's describing fog, flows from the river. How do you think you would say that? Fog well, that is dark flow from the river. Um. So in this context, that is dark is a verb in Japanese, even though it's not in English. So, kuri ga... Kusumu? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kind of lost my... Kusumu is to, to turn dark, right? Yes. So, so it just needs um, to be in past so... tense form with this kun, with this da, kusunda. I uh, kusunda ku, kusunda ku, kiri. Yes. Um, kusunda na, kiri. Uh, kawa kara nagareru. Hi. Kawa kara. What particle do you think kiri should get? Ga or o? Kiri. Yeah, kiri, kiri means the fog. fog. Does the it have control over flows. flowing in the river? Did it go, I'm going to flow in the from the river today? It's going to be ga. You're correct. It is ga. Kusunda kiri ga kawakara nagareru. So the fog flows from the river, and we know the fog is dark. Perfect. And I'm going to skip that. Mm -hmm. So our next word is hairo. Do you know what this word is? Ash color. Yes, it is ash color. So just gray is fine for English speakers, but it is literally ash color. Okay, so I, I've decided for our lesson today that I'm not going to teach this. Uh, this is literally just a generic and, what that is. It, it's the most generic and in Japanese. It's basically exactly the same as the English and between sentences. Um, 
So that that's I just decided I'm not going to teach that too many slides. So <laughs> next hey. time we'll be seeing that. But yeah, now you get to go read this sentence uh, in Japanese. What does it say? Kawa kara usunda hai iru no kiri ga nagare ko mi rochi to yu rochi wa makura yami. Hi. What does this mean? Um, from the river, the turn uh, kusunda is to become, right? Is to yes, turn to into, be dark. right? Uh, to be dark. To be dark. Um, the fog that has darkened gray right. uh, flows. Yeah, flows uh, into. Na Komi. Komi is from Komu. Oh my it is. goodness. It's from okay. Komu. <laughs> um, so it's Naga Nagare Komi flow into the valley. Rochi mm. Toyu, the valley of valley. Hi. Um, that is very dark. Yes. So, so Roji the can topic be kind of alleyway. So, so in this sentence, yes. are we emphasizing the topic? Marked by what? Are we emphasizing the uh, uh, the subject marked by ga? So neither thing is being particularly um, emphasized here. Um, if anything, I would almost say the most emphasized part is probably the darkness. Uh, because this ga right here is not a really a subject ga. It's the object ga is what it is. Um, so it's kind of just marking a passive. The, the flowing is happening to the fog but nobody's doing flowing to the fog, if that makes any sense. So that right there mm -hmm. is just the normal thing to mark. Same with the wa here for subject, that's just the normal marker. So nothing in particular is being stressed here. So the most important information is probably the how dark it is, it's just by like the context of what they've been talking about the whole sentence. So basically from the river, we have a gray fog that is really dark and flows into um, in this context, flows into the alleyway. That's our subject. Um, and this alleyway is actually all the alleyways. So all the alleyways, alleys in the Tasarare Gai, which is the district of twilight, has fog, a really dark fog in it, and they're all very dim, is basically what this is saying. Um, Understood. Yeah, so as a random flipping through all these to show you the map of <laughs> the... Urumeto, which is the name of the city. Um, Tasarare Gai is over here. So the river kind of funnily goes around it. So really easy for the fog to go all the way through all the alleyways in that. Um, oh, this... that makes so much sense. <laughs> wow. Like just flashing height. Okay. So our next word is this one. Do you know what it means? Machi, machi. What does that mean? It means a village. Yes. Um, a town. Town is probably the better word for it. Yeah. So this right here is used when you mean like a city, but you don't mean like New York as a city. So it's the smaller, it's like a small city, but it's not really village. Village would be a um, muda. Muda. I yeah. live in a muda. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you need like four thousand and under for population for the Muda. Four thousand and under, okay. So, something like that. <laughs> so, well, once you get above that, it uh, becomes a machi with that kanji. Um, I... So this is our next verb, ibiku. This means to echo. To echo. Ibiku. Hi. So, what do you think machi wa hibiku means? Machi wa hibiku. The town echoes. The town yes. echo. Yes, the town echoes. Next, oops. next is the word mono oto, which is basically like a way to say sounds. Sounds. So rather than just sound, it's like a way to say sounds in general. Mono oto. Mono -oto. Specifically, mono is thing and sound, so thingy sounds. So, right. knowing what you know about particles, and what do you think the particle for mono oto hibiku? 
for um the matchy the the city um echoes sounds what do you what do you think particle do you think we're gonna do we'll go with ga you're right it is ga because there's there's no real control going on happening here the the sounds are not making it like trying to make it neither is the city um so our next word right here is suteru randomly as any you know so do verb um suteru means to throw something away um this this verb also shows up when you throw up uh it's not going to be this i mean the kanji shows up not the verb but this is just to throw something away oh i did that wrong. uh do you know what this is normally read on its own on its own is ken ah so ken's when it's married no so that'd be like high ken and stuff on its own this normally gets the verb to do and it's uh miru it's miru yeah so this right here is another is an, is an example of a compound verb we have the verb miru um where this the do has been dropped so we just got me and then to get it to just throw so seeing throwing away means to forsake so this is one of that 10 percent of more metaphorical you see and you throw away that means you've forsaken it means to do the throw away by looking hi so now we're actually learning the conjugation of passive form um which Specifically, we're learning it for do verbs. So for do verbs, such as iru and misuteru, um, what you do is that you get this do on the bottom of the verb, you throw it in the garbage, and you add dareru. So iru, to exist, and idareru, to passively exist. So how would you change misuteru um, into passive form? We drop the ru. Yep. <laughs> And what do you and add? And we add rareru. Yep. So, um, so it's mitsute rareru. Perfect. Mitsute rareru. Perfect. And I'm going to... To be forsaken? Yes. Uh, to be forsaken. So this allows... So passive form exists in Japanese for the purpose of having sentences like this. Machi wa mitsute rareru means that the city was forsaken. The city did not do forsaking. So if this right here was in normal form, matsu wa misute, uh, this would mean the city forsaken something. So rareru form is used when you want to make it instead just passive, uh, saying that the city was the one being forsaken. And we kind of take off that subject for there. Um, mm. how is this red? Machi. Yep, machi city. Our next word is wabishi. Wabishi means wretched. So very sad. <laughs> wabishi. Um, wabishi. do you know how to conjugate e adjectives into ta form? Ah, huh. in the past. Yes, past tense. Oh, wabishita. Good guess. Good guess. So that's how you would conjugate um a a a pseudo verb, for example. But for adjectives, it actually be kata. So the e would be dropped, and we add kata. So wabish wabishkata means was wretched. Yeah, I it's the cool yeah. thing, but it become the ka. Hi hi hi. Wabashikata. Wabashikata. Now I'm like, wait, is there cool there? Yeah, no cool. Uh, the no, cool need, thing you're thinking about is like... naru. <laughs> so uh, naru is to become. So if I want to say to become wretched, that'd be wabishku naru, uh, which then can become nata. Sorry, I like I just had this like conversation today. Uh, so this one in right here means to have become wretched, and the one on top means was wretched. So was wretched and has become wretched. Kind of. So yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. It gets even more confusing when you start doing 
knife form with the kata, then goes wabashikuna kata, which um would be wabashikuna kata. This would be this one right here is negative form wabashi. So it has not it is it is it is no longer wretched. So not wretched anymore. So anymore. yeah, these these look so similar. I, I I made the say I made the mistake not that long ago. And yesterday in the uh, Percy Jackson Club, we <laughs> we had that pop up again. And we're really? like, ah, why do they make them so similar? <laughs> and one second, I gotta do something real quick with my computer. You slideshow. Okay. Oh. Similes. So we just saw similes not that long ago with na. But that's because yo is a na adjective. Hi. And na adjectives means you're putting a adjective and then there's going to be like a noun right there. And you're describing the noun. Sometimes though, you don't want to describe a noun. Sometimes you want to describe a verb. Like if I said she grows like a flower, grows is the verb. The way they're growing is like a flower. I'm not talking about how she looks or anything. Um, in that case, we actually use ni because the particle ni can mean the way you do a verb is what ni can do. Um, so you will also see this ni with, for example, naru, which meant to become. So if I said neko ni naru, this means to become a cat. So that's where that ni is coming from. It's coming from the verb. To do the verb in this way, which is like a magician in this context. Um, can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Machutsu shi no yo ni dorobo wa me no mai no mono o kesu. Hey, what do you think this means? I would start here with this one. The thief make things disappear the the thing in front disappear as if he was a magician yeah as if isn't really in here but it uh, works fine i just say like a magician but as if it's like like fine. a magician yeah like a magician so the thief makes things disappear right before your eyes like a magician so yeah just those smiley similes so now you have that information. How do you think you say the town was wretched like it had been abandoned? So like it had been abandoned is the like right there. And it's being used for the verb wretched, which is wabishi, which isn't a verb, but it's an adjective, but it, it works the same with adjectives. <laughs> it's wretched. The town is wretched. Wretched, that's wabishi. Uh, so it's... um. Um, the ordering of the component doesn't matter, right? Not really, as long as they're so separated by their clauses. So it's machi wa. Yep, that's misute. fine. Like it had been abandoned. So yeah, so passive form. Misute. <laughs> Kata. So the no part here only occurs with nouns. So instead, we don't need that noun because this works as a relative clause, basically. So we can just stick that right around the yoni because yo is an adjective and we can just describe it with a relative clause. What do you think happens next? Wabishi. Yes. Wabishi. Uh, and then if you since I had was wretched, that'd just be wabish kata. Wabish kata. Hi. Hi. So yep, that's what it means. The town was so... wretched like it had been abandoned. Yoni. Okay. So this is our next sentence. So this verb right here is hibiku. It's in the same thing we saw in the last sentence, which is a way to say and, um, but I just decided not to teach that today. But it's just a generic and, so we just have and right there. So let's go read this sentence. 
Garan. Uh, we'll, let's ignore this word and that word because we have not learned them yet. <laughs> so, machi wa mono oto ga hibiki mitsuterare ta yoni wabishikata. Hi. So, the town. The sound of the town echo um and yep um abandon yoni okay as if it was abandoned yes um, so basically wretched. yeah the town was wretched as if it had been abandoned and the sounds echo the, the, the sounds echo and the sound so it's two claws here there's yes. two separate things that being said yes that's why this is an and right there it's a little and um but the subject mm. for both of these in this context is still the machi so the machi it echoes and is wretched like it has been abandoned the words i skipped out is yakeni which is awfully like a lot oh. and garan what is yak yake Japanese, just a lot. So we have that ni again, which I told you is used when you want to say a way when you do a verb. So yoni is like, and this we're here, yakini is just being, it echoes a lot. It, it awfully right. echoes is uh, how I think yeah. that'd be translated. And then garantoshi, garantoshita yes. is. So garan is a sound effect in Japanese. Um, which are different than sound effects in English, but um, it, it's a sound effect of emptiness. Of emptiness. Yeah, it's a sound effect <laughs> of emptiness. And then tosta I... is how you turn sound effects into verbs. It's just to plus sudo. So um, to is kind of the sound effect marker, and then sudo is just to do. So to do emptiness. So the town was doing emptiness would be a literal way to say that. But literally in English, we just say the empty town. Uh, but Can I Japanese... just make a comment? Yes. I I find this sentence very poetic. It's, mm -hmm. it's what I like so much about Japanese. It's, it's literally like you feel it's, it it's, it treat the town as if it's it's this painful thing that mm -hmm. you you know how sometimes you make a sound like you open your mouth and you <laughs> you produce sound but it's it's an empty sound mm -hmm. and they yeah. attach that image with being wretched so yeah. it's it's even yeah. worse <laughs> so so that's kind of cool yep and that's basically we're going to end today i'm first i'm going to end with um a kanji check um, how is this kanji I... read? How is this kanji read? Which one? Uh, up in the corner. Oh, yoru. Yep, yoru. How about this one down here? Um, the street is um, hmm, it's not machi. District. It's guy. It's guy. Yep, guy. Perfect. How about this guy? Dorobo. Hi. And this guy? Kawa. Yep, Kawa and this guy. Which one? Uh, this guy is um Rochi. Perfect. And one, two more. What's this guy? Machi. And this guy? Mitsutararu. Yep, perfect. And that's where we're ending for the day. You uh, missing Kurayami. Kurayami. <laughs> well, you did. You're right. I forgot Kura. Well, you know it, what it is, so it's all good. <laughs> that was fun. Hi, hi, hi.